Welcome to the Telstra Dome. It is St Kilda up against Collingwood and as we said, an absolute sellout. Not one spare seat, no standing room left in this ground. Absolute capacity, a fitting crowd for what is going to be a marvellous afternoon. As I say, hello for the first time to James Brayshaw and with oh. all the A-grade team assembled here and an A-grade match ahead of us, Jim. Gary, I feel like Larry Gomes up the other end of Viv Richards at the minute. The Nick Bryan's in. It's quite extraordinary, but this is going to be a ripper. I tell you, the two big Melbourne clubs going bang on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. It's going to be fantastic. He has dominated the airwaves today, our man Bryan, and he will continue on in great form as uh, St Kilda on the back of a big win last week. The Magpies need to win one of these big ones, as Brian rightly pointed out. Ray Chamberlain there, Brian's man, as the two captains meet in the middle of the ground luke ball and nathan buckley opposite ends of the spectrum young superstar and a veteran of the game saints have won the toss and will kick to the left of screen uh, some big name players out here for the saints but one of the biggest name also making a return to footy good afternoon to you chris jones hello gary we'll talk about that in one sec there is an unbelievable atmosphere down here as you said a sellout i would say this though really really big gusts of winds coming through the ground at the moment the St Kilda coaching staff they've had a big day already they they went out and watched Justin Kaczynski this morning he ran around for the Casey Scorpions reserves would you believe and uh, as you can see here he uh, he was really good actually I went out there and had a look myself and uh, just threw himself into every contest some kaz kamikaze stuff from him throughout the day as he could only do but he was he was good and uh, give him a couple of weeks and he'll be back guys Good on you, Jonesy. Uh, Brian Taylor, Please. you coming back from injury. I couldn't imagine them sending out you to the VFL Reserves. Would refuse to play in the <laughs> VFL Reserves, Gary. But uh, Justin Number 73 Stone. he's got on there. Uh, that's an oft-used number. Well. Just been told the all-time football record crowd here is 53,313. We may break that today. State of Origin here the other night, Gary, got some 54,000 people. They snuck a few extras in against health department regulations. Oh, you can't say that. Why wouldn't we break that crowd today with this game? I don't know. Sellout? I've spoken to our senior producer and he can't give me the answer to that. <laughs> well, it is a beauty. Look at Dale Thomas there. He's um, getting himself organised for what's <laughs> going to be a big afternoon. Look at the do. Talk about the wind gusts. What, that's a bit of Dermot <laughs> early on. Get up and fly away in a minute, Dale. Look at the five down there. The Collingwood five, if we can get a shot, a wide shot. We've got Thomas, Sean Rusling coming back for his first game since last year. Alan Didak and then Tarrant and Rocker. They, the five, are just standing there saying, righto, boys. Send your best five down here. We're ready to go. Sean Rosling looks like he spent a bit of that time in the strong room, Gary. Ooh. He's uh, nice and bulked up. Yeah. He's muscled up, all right. I'll tell you what, they've got the senior umpires here today. You mentioned uh, Ray Chamberlain, fastest whistle in the West. Brett Allen and Matthew James, very senior and a very good umpiring panel we've got here today for this one. Clement gone to Rewalt, boys. Big Fraser Gehrig and Preston Giacomo. There are matchups all over the place. Maguire and Rocker. Big atmosphere, big match, big bounce. Look at Fraser get nice and high. I thought uh, Buckley might have been manhandled on the way through. And the champ will get the first kick. And look for him to go long to Rocker. Kick's not going to reach him. Gets to it on the bounce, the big boy. Rusling getting involved as well. Coming through, Didak. O'Bree. A little don't argue, Didak. Back to Rusling. Oh, slammed into the turf, Rosling, and he'll get a free. Maxie Hudson, ferocious. Now, this man's come into the side outside the 25, boys, as a result of Leon Davis not coming up. Round 17 last year, massive wraps on him. You're right, he has bulked up. Super leg speed. I remember him playing out of the square a number of occasions, so good to see him back. Wearing uh, Woe Woden's old number. Got the kick on the way. It's going to land somewhere near the square. Thomas in front. Read it beautifully. Did he ever? There'd be some secure defenders down there. I think most notably Graham that might have the job on him would be very disappointed with that defensive effort. He's come from behind. He didn't have any touch or feel. Then Jason Graham. For the first of the match, Ooh. it's low, but it's there. Well, you can't underestimate this young fella's talent. He's got a great vertical leap. We've seen him do some exciting things. Took one of the marks of the year on Anzac Day. But look at Graham. As a defender, you cannot lose touch and feel. The minute you do, you're at the peril of your opposition. Thomas gave himself a bit of room, came virtually around him and marked in the goal square. So 
Just a lesson for the young man who's had a pretty good year, Jason Graham, but that's a prodigious talent right there. Match of the weekend, and Dale Thomas getting the pies off to a flyer. A goal in a minute. Ricks. Hasn't that been a story? The young man from Kerry Grammar, Buckley. Already a couple of possessions. Reese Shaw was good as he feathered that ball out. Loney. The look at the left foot. Here he is. Do you reckon the Collingwood faithful might jump on the bandwagon of Thomas if he keeps going the way he is? If they're not already rocket nudged out. Maguire strong, and that'll be a great contest today. Kick is not so good. Ricks didn't get down at Dynak. The spinning move, Rusling. Buckley within range. It's bending back. Two and two for Collingwood. Very nervous start. Very nervous opening from a St Kilda point of view, but from a Collingwood perspective, you couldn't want for a better start. Don't think there's much room left on that Thomas bandwagon, by the way, Brian. That's just a horrible, horrible kick. Didak and Baker looking forward to that contest as well. But Maguire just cannot be as sloppy as that against quality opposition. And they've made to pay. Nathan Buckley, big start to this game. The Pies up and about. 12 possessions to two so far in this game. Fraser over the back. Thomas tried to hit Buckley. Missed him. Dynak sweeping through. Got it to Fraser. Shoveled in the Opry direction, but Goddard was very good to Del Santo. Wide handball will work out OK to Milne. Has a bounce in the centre. Just unloads the ball long. Ricks has got a couple to beat, and Loney at the back did very nicely. Short ball, Lockyer, so full of composure at the moment. The Pies, as Gary mentioned, look at Buckley, possession four, and we've only been going three and a half minutes. Ball doesn't come at him. Low bullet, Tarrant should have marked it with the Dukes extended, didn't. Now Graham always kicks long and direct. Long ball, short at the back, Ricks. Ricks in front, strong mark. Had the mark it, Brian, because he was one against three Collingwood players in the general vicinity. I don't know where Fraser Gehrig's gone, to be honest. Revolt's playing very high up the ground. Trying to take Clement up and run back with a flight. Michael Ricks plays on with a handball to Goddard. Goddard from beyond the arc. Long ball. Hasn't quite got the legs, or has it? It has, but it's offline. St Kilda's first scorer behind. Luke Ball got the job on Nathan Buckley, so uh, just got to tighten up. Clement's kick didn't quite get to Loney. Handball over the top to Johnson, who will want his left side. Amazing how often left-sided players get their left side given to them. Lockyer. Over the top. Nice kick. House. The start to the match from the Pies. They just look really good. They look switched on. Davies has taken the mark out there. Down to Buckley. Now gone forward, Jim. Sorry, just changed off the ball. Gone forward. Getting a pile of the footy. The skipper to Lecuria. Handball off. Shaw. To Reese Shaw. Reese Shaw with a long one. Rocker with a big climb. I think he might get a holding yeah. free. Or it might be Fraser. Free kick. Fraser. Now, this is the thing. This is what... There's a lesson in this. Once they go quick, they've got Josh Fraser and Rocker up there. Defenders, we say it often, get very, very nervous and make bad mistakes. Josh Fraser to make it three in a row for the Pies. The kick looks good. Oh, that is a big start for Collingwood. Oh, they're sharp. They look absolutely switched on. They were as, they're as good as they were bad last week at the start of the game. Rick's the player that's holding Fraser. Now, that is a matchup that the Magpies will try and exploit. Fraser to get forward on that young man that hasn't played too much footy. And uh, as you can appreciate, when he's on against, up against Josh Fraser and he's sitting in the goal square or near enough to, they get nervous. He's not a natural defender. Ricks gives away a very, very soft free kick. Oh, boy. Collingwood are up and about here at the Dome on a Sunday afternoon with a packed auditorium having a look at their work at the moment. St Kilda, Ricks been involved but has done nothing effective so far in the game. Here's Davies. 
Low ball to space, Thomas. The two blondes combining. Both letting it flow today. Look at the centering ball. Die, Dak. Uh, when there's a side got a run on it playing with such confidence, you've got to have your most experienced campaigners out there. And I just think at the minute, Michael Ricks needs to come to the interchange bench. Just have five or ten minutes. Wait a little bit of the sting goes out of this because he's made a few blues. Just buzzing around him at the moment. Seven goals, five this year, Didac from set shots, which is not his normal go. He's better than that. Here he is lining up. Not a lot of angle. Look how he runs around to get a bit of leverage on the ball. That one's going to miss. And just short, in fact. Umpire blows the whistle and says it was a behind. Gee, it looks short to me. But uh, that'll be Collingwood's first behind of the day. They're 3-1, 19 to St Kilda, one behind. Max Hudson in all Australian form, according to people that know. Gets the ball into the hands of Montaigne. Has a bounce and then another one. Gets a shepherd from Hudson. That's five bounces now for Lee Montaigne. Make that six. He's going to have seven. Eight. Nine. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes to centre half forward. Voss couldn't take it. Revolt with his first meaningful touch around the body. The kick wasn't great. Johnson stands in the hole. Gets it to Buckley. Eyes composed in the back half. See how cool Buckley was and then, Gary? It's great, isn't it? They've got numbers back, Brian, and the delivery forward for St Kilda's been poor. They're pushing back and just backing their skills to run with a footy. Morrison, the former Eagle, played some cameo roles for the Pies this year. Short ball. A couple of copings for this man, Lacuria. And they're just dishing it back to find space. That was Heath Shaw. Getting it back from Fraser, driving the ball. Tarrant in front was the little man, Baker. Always gets a big job at the defensive end for St Kilda. Kick goes backwards to Hudson. Off now to Ball. They probably just need to feel the footy in their hands a bit, Gary, the Saints. Maybe slow it down a touch. Blistering start from Collingwood. Well, they just got to get their hands on the footy. They just could not get their hands on it that first uh, five minutes and paid the price on the scoreboard. Big Goose Maguire, long ball. Revolt edged out of it. Harvey at the back gets barreled and we'll get a free I think well straight away Thomas has put Harvey on to Buckley you've got to make Buckley accountable otherwise he'll just run his own race he goes now looking for a revolt good kick she works hard Nick revolt he'll come and square it to Montagna in very unselfish fashion Well, Revolt is the target. He is the target that uh, gets so much footy put through him, and his athleticism allows him to honour most. But really, we haven't seen Fraser Gary even get to a contest yet, and he's a bloke that's got to now impose himself. They're looking down the barrel, three goals, flying start. He's got to put his hand up. Lee Montagna, just the five goals for season 2006. That looks good. The Saints get their first. Well, that is going to help. Every goal helps, of course, but they just need to get a little bit of composure back into this lineup. Revolt the pie out, just so important. He's a class act. He's against a quality opponent in James Clement. But uh, Brennan got out across half back. Hasn't really got an opponent, or he has now. He's going to go to Loney. They've got to make him accountable, and that's what Mick Mulhouse has done. They're not going to let him just drift across half back on his own. He goes to Loney. The first interchange of the game takes place, unusually here, and O'Brie, the one coming off a centre square infringement, will go against Collingwood, so St Kilda get a good break here. Dale Thomas it was, it came in off the square too early. Ackland, we've been going, Gary, ten minutes in this game, or half the quarter. We have not had a ball up or throw in yet. It is a different game here at the Dome, make no mistake. We saw yesterday Hawthorne and West Coast, stoppages, clearances, none of that here. It is totally different. It's going around in circles at the moment. Fraser, driving ball, Rock has got the sit. Decided not to jump and come back and make contact. Not sure that was the way to go. Graham, Reese Shaw, he is getting better and better week by week. Advantage paid, Saints are away. Graham is a good kick, over the top, Harvey. Got time to gain composure, lines it up. St. Kilda's bottom, no, they don't. Hit the post. What a bump. 
does at this ground at the moment. Was it ever? And, and look, good coaching from both coaches here. They're just trying to turn the tables on some of the match winners or, or game breakers. And Harvey now proactive as a midfielder. Clement, good kick. Reese Shaw with all sorts of room to move. Goes to Didak. Baker went to ground and infringed. Oh, that well, that's could be 50. 50. Needs to be careful. It that should, have should been 50. be 50. Yeah, absolutely, it should have been. He's no right to go and touch that footy. Didak squares it up to Shaw. He goes. Got uh, Tarrant and Fraser long. Surely you'd go there now. To Swan. And that's where he does go with a long ball. Maguire to come in from the side. Gets crunched. Rosling. Helped into the turf by Goddard. And the umpire wants it. So a fast start to this one at the Dome today. And the 200th meeting being played here today between these two sides. Rocker. Tackled by an aggressive Max Hudson. And a ball up just 20 out from Collingwood's goal. Good player, Max Hudson. He just does what needs to be done. That tackle had to be made, and he made it. Game 186, career-wise for Max, Fisher did well. Look at Ball, he's looking in all directions to see what company he's got. No escort for him, though. Fraser, Garrick, leads and gobbles it up. Ricks on Shaw. Turns it on to the left, here is Ricks. He should mark this in the air, and he does. Now he needs to be effective with his disposals. Kick is into Clark. He's a little overawed at the moment, Ricks, I reckon, with what's going on. He's got it to Clark on this occasion, but he needs to settle. Well, he's getting his hands on it, that's one thing, but uh, can be costly. He just, re uh, Heath sure it is. They try to drag him back to that last line. His run's been so effective. And then uh, the big man presented when he had to. Presty just took a fresh air swipe at the footy. Just the seven games this year for Xavier Clark. Here he is directly in front. A chance to kick the Saints second, and they need it just to steady. Kick is on the way. It looks good. It is. St Kilda have got their second. So it's just settling down into a very good contest at the moment. It's the run and carry. That's what you want from Fraser Gehrig. Just to get involved in the game. He's such a talented player. An imposing presence. And uh, yeah, it is happening all around this fellow. But I guess to his credit, he's been able now to get his hands on it a little bit. So... One thing, Xavier Clark gets some games under his belt now. Two in a row for the Saints. And that's all happened since their opposition skipper, Nathan Buckley, has gone to the bench. <laughs> there he is. He was the, the leading possession getter before he went to the bench, JB. Amazing mm. the impact big-time players have on these matches. We saw it with Everett yesterday for Hawthorne as Clark. Burst on three. No, no advantage. Come back. Footy will come back. Great chase from Scotty Burns, one of the older players in this side. Never gives up. Started on the bench, did Scotty Burns. Delivers to Lockyer. Ball didn't quite get to him. Milne was good. Fisher comes in very hard and won a terrific ball. Corralled against the line and then slung by Shaw. And he's holding the ball. Heath Shaw. Swan, great use of the body in that marking duel with ball. Absorbed the contact and kept eyes on the ball as well. Well done. Now, a pretty crowded Collingwood forward line confronts the Pies at the moment. Wakeland on that new patch of turf in front of the interchange area. Kick forward is always going to be gobbled up by Montagna. Good work by Baker off the ball, just protecting uh, his teammate. Rick's coming for a spell on the bench and... St Kilda just using the ball in defence. Maguire, Great kick. lovely penetrating ball to Fisher. Now Harvey on the run. Garrick's on the lead. It needed to be lower. It was a little high. Garrick had a look. Marked on 50. Yeah, they got big numbers back to Magpie, so... Let's play on. He's gone off the line of the mark. I think he's got himself into a spot of bother here, Fraze. Fisher. Backwards to Goddard. Back to Fisher. Now he can run. Can he kick it from just beyond 50? High ball to the square. It's two on one against the uh, Saints. And Clement, steady. To Swan, who can have a bounce and use the run of Johnson. Gets to him now. 
Long ball from that player. Fraser, the target, but it won't get to him. Again, Baker just sags off and takes a good mark to Ackland. And now Graham. They've settled the Saints. Xavier Clark at half forward. Look to Montagna by hand oh. and then goes to Revolt yeah. with a beautiful kick. Just brings it here. Oh, that's set up. Class act is no substitute for class. Xavier Clark, who uh, has missed a fair bit of footy, just the composure to come back inside and then spot the kick up. The difference is Collingwood going forward now, not getting that same run and drive, not able to penetrate. Baker, you've seen, has been able to cut a couple of those kicks off. They've just got to get some legs up. The Saints controlling the last few minutes. This part of Nick's game, we need to have a really close look at. I reckon he snuck that through. He has. Saints hit the front. Always a good sign, that when you just jag the first one. Didn't look like missing, and all of a sudden, after Collingwood jumped out of the blocks, the Saints are back. Look at this. This is just the class act here. Goes one way and then comes back, and good enough on the left boot to put it to Revolt, who spent a good 20 minutes pre-game, boys, just out there, drilling goals from roughly the same spot on the ground. So his confidence sky high. The Saints have settled beautifully. This is a cracker. Three goals apiece here at the moment. Goddard's gone down. Loose man in defence. Out of the middle, Burns. This is one way to beat that. You just kick over the top of it. You've got a one-on-one. -on -one. Tarrant and Rocker. Where's the ground level players? Hunchton did really well. Well done, Max. Goddard. Close to the line. They can concede if they have to, and they do. Intelligent play by St Kilda in defence. Composure, isn't it? Just got uh, just got themselves really well settled here. Luke Ball comes to the bench, pick it on. Goddard to bring it back in. Taking his time with it. Gets it to Hudgston. No one standing the mark, so he can go whenever he likes. Does so to Harvey. Down the line to Ackland. Ackland inboard, finds Maguire. It's a sleep, Anthony Rocker. He's got to get up. They've got to get... They're all mark or nothing at the moment, the Collingwood forwards, and particularly the big two. They're going to work harder to keep it in. Long, penetrating ball from Maguire. Clement edged. Revolt under the footy. Milne working very hard. And it'll be tossed in. It is amazing how, how quickly... Uh, the makeup of a game changes. Have a look at the crowd, Gary. Right to the back row. That rarely happens here at the Dome. Seats right at the back of the third deck. Absolutely chockers. 48,000 in already, and we believe more still to come in. Here's Buckley. Had a rest, as JB mentioned. Was the leading possession getter, and still is. With seven disposals. Reese Shaw, Swan. Johnson on his wrong right foot. Lecuria to go on his left. Oh, handball Del Santo, Loney calling. Now they've got the numbers, St Kilda here. This game is full of pressure at the moment. Forgive the mistakes of some of these players because it is a real pressure environment. That's Anthony Rocker's man right there, boys. And he is uh, hurting his side. Maguire, good-looking ball. Rewalt presents, won't get there. Milne's tidy off the deck and milked it beautifully. He knew he was going to be tackled by Lockyer. Got the ball away. Too far out to score. From the boundary line, looks to take him on. Kick to the goal square, getting back there. To touch was Pendlebury. Starting the day on the bench, now on the ground. Um, Maguire, five possessions. Anthony Rocker yet to touch the footy. Tarrant yet to touch the footy. But defensively, Anthony Rocker's just dozed off a couple of times. Short ball from Clement to Johnson. Benny Johnson across the ground into the hands of Wakeland. Pendlebury over the top. To half forward. There's Maguire again back on Didac. Good to see the big goose back in some form. He had a pretty ordinary time of it about a month ago. Fisher. Nowhere to go. Concedes by hand and pretty ordinarily too. 
They've got numbers out the other side of the ground if they want to use them, making it very hard for themselves in the back half. The Saints, normally beautiful and clean, Dal Sando, but this is great forward pressure from Collingwood. Tarrant went to ground. Dal Sando will pick it up this time. Finally, they get it the out body. Of here. And as you said, Gaz, this is where the numbers always were. Tell you what, they want to put that on the highlights, take the pies, the pressure in their forward end, JB, as you mentioned. Excellent. Peckett. Here's Rocker, first touch of the game, had to get rid of it quickly. Johnson has had a number of possessions that have been ineffective, and this one could cost them. Montagna, now Milne, a bounce, Johnson closes, Milne lets it rip. St Kilda. Uh, I don't want to be on Anthony Rocker bashing, but if you're going to play this loose man here, watch this. There's the tackle. He gets up looking to go after Milne rather than getting up and supporting his teammate. And all of a sudden, he finally gets back in the contest, and here's Milne who runs away and, sit and kicks the goal. He's got to get his mind on the job, Anthony Rocker. He's uh, too content to sit back, argue, get angry, and the game buzzes around him. And he didn't get the job done in the forward half. He's now gone into the ruck. He's got to do something. The Saints have kicked four in a row. Chris Jones. Well, Fraser Gehrig's just taken himself off the field and he's gone straight down the race with the doctor. He's running, which it may be hopefully something that they can manipulate or jab very quickly. Doesn't look like it's uh, his legs at all. His team have uh, responded fantastically well to a blistering start from the Pies. Clark worked his way through. Justin Peckett on the left looking for Voss. Did it really well, did Voss. Got the handball away nicely. Powell dispossessed Clement will get it to Buckley normally uses it beautifully well and this is no exception to Pendlebury now Swan Tarrant the player beautiful kick from Swan nothing Hudson could do and Chris Tarrant presents up to the footy wonderfully well well he's got his work cut out hasn't he Tarrant against Max Hudson who does not concede one thing ever his work rate in that last one was fantastic the last ball that came inside 50 so you you might be getting your hands on it but as long as you work all right then eventually it'll come chris tarrant from long range has pulled the kick to the right and tried to work its way back but not enough apparently fraser gehrig boys trying to get off the ground for about three minutes but the footy wouldn't leave him alone so eventually he's got off and uh, we'll find out he's back out on that race now we'll find out what the problem was as soon as we can they don't look too concerned Let's hope that things are okay for Big Fraze. Maguire. He seems quite happy within himself, so that may be a good sign. Here's exactly. Peckett. Burns working back in the same direction. Did well to bring the ball to ground and not infringe. And this one will ball up. I think that may well be nearly the first ball up or second of the day. When Maguire gets the footy, he kicks over the line which is so valuable which again makes anthony rocker's job even more important that he's working hard defensively give him time to set up and it's going to hurt the pies saints have kicked their four goals in a row the last four of the game after st Kilda, after collingwood kicked the first three johnson has been getting plenty of it his seventh disposal short ball now lacuria davies just at the half back line Beautiful kick, Lockyer. The build-up is good. Didak. Put the head down. Need to just keep the eyes on the ball for a touch longer. Tarrant. And Voss to tidy up, maybe. Scotty Burns. Well, they've just changed that forward line structure around a little bit. Rocker went onto the ball to play in the ruck, and uh, they went a bit smaller. Buckley's gone down to rest down there with Tarrant and Didak. Burns. Long ball. Maguire is having a day out back there. Uncontested mark. The handball off to Fisher. We'll go back to Maguire. In fact, it's Del Santo at the top of the square. He slips it over the top. Hutchton. Handball. We'll find Powell. Just sits the top Oof. over the top to centre half forward. It's bouncing. Morrison, the only player who was going to get it. That's not a great kick. Clement able to make it good. I thought he was Maguire for a minute, Stephen Powell. <laughs> Over the top to Burns and his kick into the centre. A nice one to Pendlebury. 
Pies fans wanted 50. Even though they just sat back on that, the umpires. Numbers on the other side of the ground. Wakeland is one of them. He'll allow the mark to be taken by Swan. Over the top to Shaw. Not sure if the mark was taken. We're inside the last 10 seconds of the match. Lecuria needs to find a target with this kick. Well, they've done it. Uh, he's gone backwards. And the siren's going to beat Collingwood. But it was a quarter of two halves. The pies ripped out there. And then the Saints answered with four in a row. A quarter of two halves. Does that that'll work? That'll be an eight. <laughs> uh, it, was a, it was a great quarter of footy. Collingwood were dominant in that first probably eight to ten minutes. Lead on the back of Nathan Buckley. And then all of a sudden, after kicking the first three, the Saints responded with the next four. And now take the ascendancy in at quarter time. St Kilda, 4-3, 27. The Pies, 3-3, 21. Still trying to grapple with the quarter of two halves, but uh, we understand exactly what James Brayshaw was getting at. The Magpies kicked the first three of this match and were dominant, and then the Saints settled and bounced back in the most impressive style to lead by six points. Going for Brian Taylor, inside 50 is the same. I guess um, it was just in the end. A little bit uh, more composure from St Kilda. A couple of their class acts hitting some targets and uh, marking inside 50, the other one to keep an eye on there. Two big forward lines, but Tarrant, I don't think Tarrant's taken a mark yet, has he, Chris Tarrant? No, yes, he's got one. One. And yep. Anthony Rocker, I think, took one when he went behind the ball, but uh, Revolt looked more dangerous. I don't know whether it's a coincidence or not, but when Buckley went off, as you uh, mentioned, throughout the quarter, then Collingwood's fortune started to turn a little bit for the worse. Let's go down to Chris Jones at uh, ground level. Chris. Well, Fraser Gehrig's an interesting one. When he emerged from the rooms with the doctor, he had a couple of tablets. He's been out there and quite vocal in the quarter time break, so I'd expect him to start. Grant Thomas spent a lot of time with Nick Revolt at that quarter time break. We will see him having a chat to him here. Nick uh, looks like he's struggling with the right ankle problem. He just had a little bit of work done at that quarter time break. But that was all about structure, Gary. And what, what would they be saying there? God help us all if he's got a crook ankle, Nick Revolt. But uh, oh, I guess just trying to maintain some space. A lot of Collingwood players did get back at various stages and gathered around him. I guess as a, as a defender for Collingwood, you're looking at Nick Revolt. That's where 80% you know, of the footy's going to go through, so you sort of sag off your man a bit. Well, I heard Nick McGuan say in a radio interview prior to today's game that they were going to try and provide a lot of space for the St Kilda forwards. That was their main aim today, to try and have an open forward line and make sure that Collingwood didn't get too many numbers back. So you may well be right, Gary. Hardball gets, boys. It's a funny sort of a, um, a description, but it generally indicates who's at it and who's hardest and nine to one in favor of st kilda so they turned that around there weren't many hardball gets in the first 10 minutes because the ball was just in collingwood's hands, hands. there wasn't any contests and i guess once it slowed down a bit the saints were able to impose themselves a bit on the contest it's the part of the game that they're good at i think jb is it not the yep contested hardball stuff yep. st kilda they crack in there's no doubt about it mind you collingwood have two so far this year this is uh an enthralling contest, and Nick Revolt, a big part of any chance the Saints have of taking the chocolates at the end of the day. It's interesting, uh, the Saints happy to have uh, Brennan Goddard loose across half-back. They pushed Loney up the Magpies to try and make him accountable, but uh, Goddard six possessions, Maguire seven possessions, Hutchton seven, Fisher seven. They're all defenders, boys. That's where the uh, attack is starting from, in St Kilda's back half. Kirik starting this quarter. And there he is, often goes out of the field of play, spends a lot of time off the ground. Start of the second quarter, Ray Chamberlain, the little man in yellow, about to put it on the turf. Fraser elevates, did well, the young man Davies, trying to work through some heavy traffic and we'll do it again in the centre. Stephen Powell got the hard nuts in there, in the centre bounce. 13 free kicks today, and Ray Chamberlain has decided to put the whistle away, has not paid one. And that's the Ray Chamberlain I like to see when umpiring these games. Normally a little quick on the whistle. Here's Fraser and Buckley. Buckley from the middle. Low bullet ball, perfect. Look at that. Gee, that's the benefit of a guy that can kick the ball out of the middle, isn't it? Strange setup in the middle. I'm not sure they all knew who was going to get the free kick because Buckley took it. No one really stood on the mark. Well, I thought Fraser was going to get it. I think everyone did in the end. And uh, when you can do that and move it fast, it's when Anthony Rocker can come into his own. 40 goals for the year. 31-12 from the set shot variety, which he's about to attempt. And 
We're going to ride this one home with you. Distance won't be a problem here. This will be a chipping iron for Anthony Rocker from here. The accuracy rate is high, above AFL average. Kick is on the way, and look at that. Oh, boy. Even the run-up wasn't great, and it leaves one man to fly, and Sam Fisher couldn't hold the mark. Ball very much in dispute. Rusling, a late inclusion into this side in the absence of Leon Davis. Now, we don't generally factor wind here, but Chris Jones did say pre-game that there was some gusting breeze. Now, Anthony Rocker kicked that from around 50, and it fell five metres short, which is something you wouldn't expect. Bricks worked it down to ball. Hudgston and a concession and helped into the post. Or he might have just banged in there on his own. A bit of WWF there, <laughs> I reckon, from young Maxi. Oh, no, he oh, got no. a little push. <laughs> <laughs> he did get a push. The turnbuckle got him. <laughs> Brought back in by Graham. Long ball. Maguire has it fisted away. Buckley steps on through. Back to Loney to unload. To Johnson now. Low ball from that player is going to be chopped out. And then Fisher came in. This is Lee. And took a well-judged mark and then went to Clark. This is encouraging for St Kilda supporters. See that man running around. Goddard, who's been in the best form of his career over the last six weeks. Long ball, Rewalt was held. Voss in front, back. Lockyer now. In one side, out the other. So often the case here at this ground. Now Johnson over the top, Lecuria. Got room to work his way back onto his left peg if he wants, and he does that. Chipping ball, had a bit on it. Didac punched away, Hudson good. Del Santo, perhaps the longer option might have been the way to go from the Curia. Baker around the corner. And they couldn't because their setup wasn't right. They had no one. They got Rosling, Rocker, and Tarrant, and yet no one was in the square for that long option. Johnson hits Tarrant at half forward. He's called to go to the hot spot. Maguire at the back had a bit of a fly at it. Hudson at ground level, good to Baker, and now Milne. We'll push up someone. Fraser, get on your skate, son. Here he comes. The big G train. Look out if you get in the way of that big frame. Nothing forward. Nothing at all. Got to handball it off to Voss. He's got to concede. Gehrig now looks to the hard run of Revolt. Going to get to him on the bounce. And he'll see it over the line. Well... You wonder if you're watching at home, you wonder why they didn't kick the footy, is because there was absolutely no one in the, in the goal square for either side at either end of the ground. Boundary throw in, St Kilda forward line, Morrison, Swan, O'Bree. Combination through the midfield, Lecuria going to ground, Thomas tucks it and runs. Drawing the player, Fraser, not clean. Buckley has got Rocker on. Here he comes. Oh, boy. Ooh. Very, very courageous by Sam Fisher to go backwards then, knowing that Anthony was coming at him. Luke Ball. Couple of bounces. Now he goes in the Garrick direction. Not going to get to him on the full. Oh, look at Big Presty. Just worked Fraze off the footy nicely. There's a couple of big gorillas, Presty and Fraser. 220, 230 kegs amongst them. Big Presti, what are you doing? Now there's a work rate from a Ford. Play on, picked up by Harvey. Runs in and kicks the goal. I think it may have been Montaigne. Doesn't matter, it's there. Yeah, you wonder why Nick Revolt's elevated into the superstar category because he does it when the footy's in his area, but he does it when it's not. Have a look at the work rate of this boat. Doesn't give up, doesn't sit there with his hands on his knees or pulling at his shorts thinking, how hard is this game? Gets up, as some forwards do, gets up and chases blokes down. Not only works hard when he's, when he's a chance of getting the foot, he works hard when he's not. And that's what makes him a superstar. A few blokes on this ground could have a look at it. An 11-point margin in favour of St Kilda. Early stages, second quarter. They are playing the better football at the moment. Ricks. Buckley has been very good. O'Bree scraps it forward, but Maguire has been excellent in defence. Harvey. Wants someone to come at him. Has to go sideways because no one did, and... Now Ball has to stop and wait. Five-minute mark of the first quarter was the last Collingwood goal. So we've gone more than a quarter of footy without the Magpie scoring. 
All the conceding kick to Baker. This is the uh, classical tempo footy, boys. You've got a bit ahead of steam up. You don't want to give the footy back. You don't want to concede a goal. Stevie Powell. At some stage, they're going to push the button and go again. Hudson. Lots of numbers behind the footy at the moment. So Hudson goes to Baker. They'll reload from half back. Graham. Maguire. It's what they do in soccer, isn't it? Just this boomerang behind the ball. And... It's not a great option from Maguire and the fist away from Shaw. Yes, yeah, so effective. Nick Revolt down there, just uh, hand in the air, demanding that the footy get in there. At some stage, you've got to go. You can do it for a minute or two, but you, then you've got to go. Thomas missing the ball completely. Powell and Lacuria. Ball will stay in. Umpire gives it a chance to come out, but uh, that play where St Kilda holding the ball up, I'm not sure that coaches even instruct them to do that, Gary. I think one player just sees another do it and automatically they start doing it. I think they also look down the line and there's all but two Collingwood players in the St Kilda forward half of the ground. Yeah. Thomas. Lockyer. Just a little contagious, I reckon, sometimes. Clement, beautiful sidestep, wasn't it? And now the driving direct ball. Look at this. Collingwood have got the numbers here. Rocker will have to do the ground level ball. He's got Bucker, Buckley in assistance. And that one is no good. He's having a mare, Anthony Rocker. He's just got a bake from the captain for not handballing the footy back to someone in a better position. Got it. Not sure what happened there, but he picks it up and gets it off to Maguire. Hudson. Revolt. Johnson sags back in front of Gehrig, so Nick's got to hang on to the ball. Look at um, Now he goes with a high one. There's Johnson in the way of phrase, but it's not going to matter. Mark or free, no. The umpire didn't want to blow the whistle. Look at Big Fraser just giving him a gob full of... Uh, some of his finest Sunday afternoon stuff. He needs to <laughs> look at that <laughs> with good reason too, you'd reckon. That is a double sumo That's hole. Got the one on each arm and the big man still nearly pulled it in. Exactly. I agree with him. Whatever he said. <laughs> Baker. Didak. Threw it out. Loney. Rewalt getting back. Buckley's got to beat a couple. Can't do it. Lee Fisher. Goes wide, here's Big Rixey. Michael Ricks, short kick. Not what it should have been. And Morrison marks in defence. Anthony Rock is still down, boys, after the tackle. That's a waste of breath between these two boys. And, oh, Big Ray. Oh, you see that? Big Ray has just been done. Now, the footy is a good 75, 80 metres away, and Big Ray is going to pay a free kick at centre-half forward for Collingwood. That is just unbelievable. Well, we got that on camera, Gary. Well, they were at it for a good minute, those two. And Maguire and Buckley, it were, that were just giving the bit of the push and shove. And in the end, Ray thought, all right, I better get in on the action here. Josie. Gary, you're absolutely spot on. They were at it, and they're just about both blown up. And then uh, Ray Chainley came in and gave the 50. I think uh, Maguire actually got Rocker behind the play a little earlier. I think he might be fashioning a top here, Brian. Yep. From downtown with a big barrel. Big long bomb lands in the square. And it's a stacks on down there. Umpire lets it go for a long time before he wants it. Have a look at this. This is what it's for. Not just, that, not yet. Just a general bit of uh, face work from both players. Just watching it away. Watch and then it. Ray has pulled a free kick from 75 for that. Unwarranted. Let that sort of thing go, I reckon. Here's Buckley on the left. Bends it across the face. Thomas! Dragged over the behind line. Just getting a little hey, bit of... Look, there's a bit of arguing going on out there, boys. Didak and Swan both at Buckley then for not handballing the footy back. Buckley had just given it to Rocker earlier for not handballing back. Fisher, Montagna, the sprinter, the thoroughbred. Look at him go. Couple of bounces. Derek. Oh, needed to get the troops extended. Gio don't like that when it happens. Milne pursued. Free kick. <laughs> After having a quiet game, is now imposing the whistle. 
<laughs> oh, no. No, dukish work there. Bit of a finger pull from Presti. Leading forwards have to be able to mark the ball. There's the free kick in the hands, Gary. Well, we need to find out why Fraser went up the race. It may... Now, I'm only cutting him a bit of slack, but if there's a bit of dukish work done with a uh, needle, maybe... Milne to make it six in a row for the Saints. He has got it. Collingwood in a little bit of disarray. Well, St Kilda superb. Make no mistake, they've rebounded and kicked six in a row. But if you're a Collingwood supporter right now, you are a little concerned because there's some frustration, a little bit of bickering. A little bit of infighting and arguing. Now, there's nothing wrong with a couple of stern words between players on occasion. But uh, it's happened a bit too much in the past few minutes, and the Saints have been able to capitalise on it. So some strong leadership needed at the, for the Maggies. Again, Big Fraser comes to the line. Just the steam. Just needs to just uh, take a deep breath, Big Fraser. It's a hard unit to put a line through, Fraser. You don't know whether he's angry or uh, passive or... He's just got the same <laughs> look about him all the time. I reckon play him as if he's angry. I think that's <laughs> the way to go. Montagna might have copped the shot. Del Santo steps through traffic beautifully. Look at this. Thumping handball to Powell. Further afield to Harvey. Left foot from Harvey. Magnificent. Robert Harvey kicked three goals last week. They say he's contemplating retirement. Well, I don't know. I wouldn't even mention the word to him. But I tell you, they are just on fire, the Saints. And for Collingwood, very disappointing. The question's being put to them right now. And they are failing to step up to the plate on the big stage once again. The runners of the Saints through the midfield just starting to carve them up. Seven St Kilda goals in a row sees them in front by 22 points. Collingwood have not kicked a goal since the five-minute mark of the first quarter. And St Kilda to go forward again. Presti Giacomo sees Fraser wide on the Doug Hawkins wing. City side of the dome. Burns. This is the problem for St Kilda. They've got, uh, sorry, Collingwood, their forwards have had no impact and they've got no presence at the moment. Not only that, the St Kilda defenders are winning a plenty of the ball. 213 game veteran Scotty Burns driving it to Rocker. Maguire, oh, the player got met high there. Quick kick out of the pack, advanced it forward, and now Didak's got it to do with Baker. And Baker and Didak go at it. Didak keeps it alive, but Del Santo clever concedes. Big possession winners, Baker, Maguire, Hudson, Goddard and Fisher. The top five for St Kilda are all defenders. At the other end, Tarrant at the bottom of the list with Rusling and Anthony Rocker. The forwards, no impact on the game for Collingwood. Stephen Baker. High ball. Revolt got to stand his ground. Fist away from Presta Giacomo. Buckley at ground level. Little one. Hits Lakiria. Too far out to score, you'd think. Handball off to Johnson. Long ball from that player. Maguire back with the traffic. He's having a big day, the goose. Got his own Sharon out there. Off to Graham. Got Fisher if he wants him. He does by hand. Fisher's got to go. Over the top to Peckett. Pendlebury closed him down. Peckett's got Fisher short. Ignores that. Decides to dump it long. Revolt one out. Presta Giacomo gets the fist away. And Swan will go short to Pendlebury. In fact, it might have been short. Half back line. The Magpies need a goal. Obvious when, I guess, the sides kick seven in a row against you. Mercuria. You've got nine minutes remaining in this first half of football to somehow just work their way back into it a little. Buckley's trying hard. He's the leading possession get on the ground with 16. Clements even coming down forward now to try and get involved. Come at me, he's saying. Rocker. Harvey in front did really well. Yeah, courage, courage, courage. Beautiful it was now, Maguire. Goes to Xavier Clark. Good kick from Maguire. 
And Clark will go back to Maguire. Anthony Rocker will not chase. Big ball from that player. One out the champ. Now some assistance back there. Oh. But Montagna from Rebound. The left foot snap on the line. Touched by Johnson. Maguire has had 13 possessions, boys. Hudson has had 10, Fisher 9, and Baker 12. They're the defenders. So the pie forwards, Rocker 3, Tarrant 2, Rusling 3. So what would your message be at half-time to the Collingwood forwards, Gary? Fierce, loud, and long. Beautiful spinning move from Lecuria. Burns is on short. He ignores that and brings it corridor style. Lovely kick. Rusling. Without a lot of thought, didn't have a look what was behind him. Now Lockyer, wide Buckley, seems to be everywhere at the moment. Rocker in the corner, too close to the man on the mark. Here is Rocker. Went hard, Baker at ground level. Didax got running support wide. Ignored that in Buckley. And off one step, Tarrant now. Needs to think his way through it. Sideways to Loney. Long ball to the hot spot. Balls and Kilda back here. Let's just say to Anthony Rocker, you stand in the goal square, Anthony, and don't move. And that's where we'll kick it when we're one of the alternatives we've got. He did that a few weeks ago, remember, at the MCG? And it worked. Yep. Montagna. Back to Peckett. Revolt on his bike. We'll pick it up outside the 50. He's got Milne on around the body. Good work from Lockyer. Big roundhouse right. The inside 50s are basically level, Exactly, Gary. and that's why, because the structure's been at Tarrant, you'd say, why doesn't he have the same effect as, as Revolt? One of the reasons is starting point, and the other reason is that Revolt just simply reads the play better than Chris Tarrant. St Kilda Ford 50. Ricks over the back. It's sure. Sends it out defensively. Well done. Saw a shot of Fraser Gerrick down on the bench. He looking like he wants to get involved. In fact, he's just come back on the ground. So that is good news if you're a St Kilda fan. And Mick Malthouse ponders. And Blake Carousella sitting in the back of the box there for Collingwood as well. Clement. Nice spinning move there. A couple of Copelands to his name as well. Rusling. Loney and Goddard didn't have it. That'll be a Goddard ball at halfback. Loney virtually tagging Goddard and uh, has been reasonably effective. Goddard pretty dominant early in the piece. It's been his best season for the Saints, no question. Brendan Goddard. He'd be leading their best and fairest almost, would he, with Robert Harvey maybe? Or well, Harvey's missed a few games, but... Revolt had given a fair yeah, match. He would too. Certainly for a player where questions were being asked. He's answered them this year. Got a well done, Rosling. Pendlebury. Now Rocker. Over the top to Buckley unselfishly. And this will be a goal for the players and a much needed one. Forty minutes since their last goal and an um, unbelievably Nathan Buck, not unbelievably. Fittingly he kicks it because for me he's the only bloke who is just playing with the level of intensity that they need right now and he the poor bugger he does it in the middle of the ground and then with a forward line that is inept he has to go forward and do it all in the forward half he's 34 years of age he's had 18 possessions in the first half he's been the best player on the ground Nathan Buckley breaks the run of outs for Collingwood and Believe it or not, it's only a 16-point game given the fact St Kilda have been playing so well and kicked seven in a row. It's down to 16 points. This is an advantage of jagging a few early before anyone even takes their seat, isn't it? They kick those three in the first three minutes. Buckley today has only played 82% of the game and he's the leading possession getter on the ground by five with 18. Stunning performance by him with that last goal. Del Santo with a set-up kick for Goddard, who's been really good for St Kilda. Waiting for someone to come at him. Kick forward will be cut off by Morrison, so Collingwood just a little more stern in the last minute or two. Dale Thomas going effectively to full forward. Rocker and Tarrant up. 
Buckley playing forward. Ricks just to the back. Pendlebury. St Kilda tackle sandwich. And it'll be done again. Moss and Gehrig inside forward 54. The Saints. Fraser may have just inched it out of there. Well done. Went and got it. And reefed it to half forward. But Nick Rebolt back there. Ooh. There's a bounce. Questionable handball to Maxi. Back to Maguire. And he steps on through and unloads a long ball in search of Voss. Got pushed. No free. Fraser back there will dump it off to Clement. And Clement's got a duck and weave. And then Pendlebury in the centre. Oh. Well done, Goddard. Did really well. And then unloads with a very long ball that can go all the way for a sensational goal. We're going to go back to that uh, play in the middle of the ground. Chris Tarrant needed to offer protection for Pendlebury. Look at this. Tarrant behind needs to get into a position where Brendan Goddard has to go around him. Not block his run, because if he blocks his run, he gives away a free kick. But if he gets in behind him and is aware of what's around him, then Pendlebury takes that mark and the ball heads up the other end of the ground. Great goal by Goddard. Just awareness for Tarrant. Back to a 22-point margin in favour of the Saints. Four and a half minutes remaining. Ricks elevating nicely in the middle. McWalter. Ball. St Kilda. Keep coming. Voss. Lovely clean hands. Fiora. He's a thumping kick. Low ball. Riddle. Some good footy, isn't it? Just some really good footy. Win the ball out of the middle, get a genuine contest. Voss was very good in that contest, and then those dukes oh, whoa, of revolt. He's, uh, as I said, up against Clement. It's a good contest. He's a star, this bloke. He's less than a 50-50 from here, though, Gary. Have a look at the accuracy rates. Uh, in he comes. Oh. And that one is well out wide. Just poked at it, Brian. Give us what went wrong there. Just well, poked at it, I reckon. Yeah, perhaps he's run up and the ball, ball certainly caught on the outside of the foot, wasn't it? Ball drop. And most inaccurate kicking boils down to ball drop. Getting it onto the boot as nicely as you can. And that's why coaches often say to drop it as low as you can to avoid it going off course on the way down. Ball up here. Now, look, there's three minutes 20 remaining. Collingwood would not want to concede another one here. Ackland, Burns, and Lockyer combining. Buckley and Goddard, the two best men on the ground. That's a terrific mark from Nathan Buckley. It is unbelievable, this fellow. 22 points. Burns. Sorry, uh, Jim, 22 points is not insurmountable by any stretch. So if they could keep it to that, or maybe even get a goal, get it to 16, well, it gives Mick Moldhouse a chance at half time to serve it up to a few of his blokes and get them back in the contest. Pendlebury. To Clement. Couple of bounces. Steers it wide. Big Presty on the wing. Didac the long target. Good kick from Presti Giacomo. Didac, low ball. Shaw presents up nicely. It'll be a tough set shot from here. Getting back to Nathan Buckley. This quarter, 11 disposals, Gary. Three marks and a goal. He's a freak. That's getting the job done. He's not really a freak. It, his, his work rate has been, coincidentally, as good as anyone or better than anyone's, and he's getting the reward. Sure. Tight angle. Drop punt. Looks OK. Looks really good. It's there. Well, that's a, that's a very timely goal, that one, boys. 16 points now, despite the fact that they've been comprehensively outplayed. And all again, again with a throat hold, if you don't mind, <laughs> he still gets the job done, Nathan Buckley. He was trying to cut off his oxygen supply. <laughs> <laughs> Just see that. We'll see, see the bit of our wrestling moves uh, in this game. A remarkable shots coming out of the cameras there. Colin. 
Collingwood by 16 and just under two minutes remaining in the half. Another one now would bring a lot of the good St Kilda work undone by the Pies. Hobry, Acklin, now Fiora. Morrison and Voss. Loney, very swift hands in traffic. Advantage paid. Collingwood away and have got the loose. Fraser can draw the player and release Reese Shaw. He elects to kick it long. Here comes Rosling to the boundary. A couple of interested onlookers here, including one well, of the greatest league spinner the world has ever seen, Shane Warne, just having a two-week break from duties with Hampshire over there in the uh, county cricket season, and Aaron Hamill as well. A couple of old mates. McGuire down to Baker. A couple of very passionate St Kilda men too. Here we go. Shaw looking for Rosling. Went to ground and coughed up the footy. Graham spun out of there pretty effectively in the end. Ball to Revolt. Can the Saints pinch a late one? James Clement's done the right thing here. He just dropped off Revolt and positions himself across centre half back. Now, how do they go forward? That's the next question. Del Santo, normally pinpoint. Hard running. No that's exception. Hard. Gets it to Harvey. Look at Fraser get on his bike there. I tell you, Nick Del Santo. His use of the footy through the centre, Gary, is exceptional. Well, you want to get the ball in his hands, don't you, Jim? He's, uh, mind you, he's up against Paul Lecuria for most of this day, who's uh, it's about even, but he gets greater value for his possessions. But I wondered how they're going to get forward. It's Harvey. Just runs and wills himself. For a late one for Big Fraser. Shot looks good. That is good. I reckon 22 points is about the right margin. Now, I would have thought 16 would have been a bit flattering to Collingwood. Maybe they can get it back to 16. But he's the man that you want to get the footy in the hands of. But you've got to have a target to kick to, Jim. You've got to have someone presenting so you can showcase those silky uh, skills. And when Revolt pushes up, the smart players, a la Robert Harvey, go, right, someone's got to be there. So he just wills himself to the right spot. And Del Santo delivers. A five goal to two quarter for the Saints sees them 22 points in advance of Collingwood. And we've got a few seconds left remaining on the clock. Free kick. Now there's 10. O'Brien will need to kick it long and immediately. Oh, no. Going to go sideways. Wouldn't be aware of the precise timing. And I think they're going to run out. This one will go long, but Siren will sound with ball in the air. And that will no, not be a mark. And Tarrant throws the ball and bangs the head of Fiora. And my man Ray confronts him. Ray has a word to Taz. And why not? Collingwood trailing by 22 points and a bit of Biffo developing here. And my Voss and Reshaw and Taz has got the cannons ready to just pounce if he needs them. Frustration for Chris Tarrant as much as anything else. We're still in a contest. There he got some big name players. The Magpies down. I don't know where that was aimed. That might have been aimed at Razor and just collected Aaron Fuhrer on the back of the melon. But he's one player that needs to lift if the Pies are going to get their nose back in front. Half time at the Telstra Dome in front of a packed house. 22 points to the margin in favour of the Saints. 22 points to the margin in favour of Collingwood. Hopeful of getting Justin Kaczynski back into the side. He came back and played some footy in the uh, VFL reserves today. Aaron Hamill not too far away. They're gathering a nice little bit of momentum as we head to September. On the other hand, the Magpies have dropped two of their last three against uh, some quality opposition. And they wouldn't like to have lost their third out of four starts if they want to stay in touch with the top four. Yep, they've got Fremantle at the MCG next week, Collingwood, and that is a... Very big one for them. St Kilda play MC, uh, S MCG and play Essendon. That is also a big game. Let's head down to Chris Jones in the boundary. Well, Gary, uh, as you can see there, the pie's coming out very late. Uh, you mentioned there was no rain around. It is very dark down here at ground level. And the lights have really started to take effect. Fraser Gary, word out of the St Kilda rooms is that he was ill during the week. And uh, that might be why he's spending quite a bit of time on the bench today. Good on you, Jonesy. Uh, so late, in fact, we're told that they'd be looking at a uh, some sort of a fine, the Collingwood Footy Club. And maybe... Five to oh, ten grand, we're told, Gary. Uh, not, uh, not much of a problem for that club. But maybe Mick Mouldhouse needed that long to try and... Get these boys back into some sort of shape.
Just loose change floating around the Lexus Centre 5K, Gary. Picked that up off the gym floor. That's unbelievable. It's in the donation can loose on the way change. out. Uh, this is a pretty serious time, I reckon, for this side. There's the skipper there. Now, he would have had plenty to say and continues to. They kicked those first three goals, and I think we all agreed that they looked sharp. They looked on. It looked like it was going to be a pretty impressive afternoon. And they dropped away, and uh, probably intent, hardness at the footy. All those uh, really key indicators were very much in favour of St Kilda. I've been disappointed with that man, Anthony Rocker. He's I don't the know key. whether he's carrying an injury or not, but he doesn't look fit. He spends too much time hunched over, grabbing on under his shorts. Maybe his preparation hasn't been great, but once you're out there, you can only judge them on the way they've presented, and uh, he hasn't had an impact. And Chris Tarrant falls into the same category. We talk pre-game about how good they were in that forward half. He's had three possessions and taken two marks and uh, hasn't hit the scoreboard at all. He's kicked one behind, in actual fact. Rocker not scored in any way, shape or form. We know they're talented, but that bloke at the other end is playing a bit one out with uh, Fraser Garrick maybe having some sort of injury. He just gets to contest, boys. Just presents, imposes, tackles, turns the footy over. It's the difference. There is the big G train. Just wandering around. He's an amazing, enigmatic style of uh, setup. Just goes on little walks and seems to mutter away to himself. And <laughs> he's just an intriguing cat. Second half, ready to go. Big crowd at the Dome to watch these two big Melbourne clubs. Ackland flew on his own. One down, though, to Swan. Free kick here, boys, being paid by an umpire who's in the forward half of the ground for St Kilda. And it must be a holding free against the Saints. Yeah, it's going to O'Bree. And now Rocker presents up. Baker to go back. Rocker couldn't take the mark. Montagna. With the high ball forward. Xavier Clark at the front. Fist away from Shaw. Look at Powell step on through. Very nice handball to Goddard. Sits it up in front of Fraser Gehrig. Good he effort. gets to the footy now and works it to ground. Milne, can he step on through and give it to Graham for a big start for the Saints? He's got it. Yeah, well thought out from Gehrig too. Came at the footy, realised that he was going to get tackled. Nice hands from Powell. Kick doesn't have to be perfect. Just watch the mindset here. Lockyer, Tarkin Lockyer makes a bad mistake. He leaves. Stephen Milne when the ball is still in dispute. Gehrig plays it off to Milne. Lockie is now out of position. And Milne sets the goal up. Disappointed. The Baker attack on the footy in the rocker marking contest. Superb. Great start by the Saints. Early second half here. 28 point leaders. Biggest margin of the game to date. O'Brien no, Powell. Lockhorns. Look at the Stephen Baker effort here, boys. This is what it's about. Early in the game, you want to see a sign that your side are back and up and ready to go. And back with the flight of the footy, as he's done all day, to be honest. And he's got Didac pretty well under control. As a big man, you've not only got to take that mark, Gary, you've probably got to injure the other of course you do. You. That's about imposing yourself on the game, Brian. It's unfortunate, James, but you've occasionally <laughs> got to do no, that. But it, no, but that's absolutely right. There's a legitimate <laughs> opportunity to put a play. Like Alan, how appreciative would Alan Didac be if Anthony Rocker cleaned up Stephen Baker then. Very appreciative. <laughs> Collingwood, 10 of their 13 third quarters. Oh, they are the third quarter specialists. Burns. Ray. Chamberlain has blown the whistle and said free kick, and I agree with you, Ray. So a free kick to Scotty Burns from right on the 50 line. He'll kick this. Man on the mark just inside. And this is a key, key shot at goal for Collingwood to stay in the hunt. You saw a match up there, Powell and O'Brien. O'Brien being very important in recent times, uh, but now getting some heavy attention, and Powell has had a very good uh, afternoon on him. Scott Burns from right on the blue arc comes in close to the man on the mark. Good looking kick. That's the one Collingwood needed. Scotty Burns has played uh, just over half of the game, so he's used it increasingly sparingly off the interchange bench. But you know what you're going to get from him. 
No doubt about that. And an important goal to stay in touch. Nathan Buckley started this uh, third quarter forward. And now back into the centre. Collingwood get an answering goal through the veteran Burns. Ackland out. Here he is, Burns, out of the centre. Eyes up as he looks to Thomas. Tarrant at the back. Oh, Hudson too easily working Thomas off the ball. Graham through the centre. Look at the numbers here. Ball to Harvey. Harvey will go to Revolt. Got pushed under it. Voss at the back. Morrison was pretty good. Fraser claimed. Harvey will come through again. Slicing handball to Montagna. Who has missed? Good forward line pressure, wasn't it? Keeping the footy in. Again, you just saw an example at the other end of the ground, though. If the Magpie forwards don't get it, it, it just comes out too easily. They have got no capacity to lock it in and give themselves a chance to set up again. Is that a planning thing or an attitude thing? Well, I don't know. You, the leading possession winners are all defenders for St Kilda. Goddard to Voss, who's taken it one hand, diving down low. I'd given up hope on him. Yeah, <laughs> good was it? And he'll line up for goal. Very close indeed. Have a look at this. It's a bullet pass from Goddard. It was great and held off with one arm, Voss, oh. and marked it with the other. Superb. Pretty quiet, really, in his 150th. Uh, Brett Voss, just the four possessions. This goal will be handy. Voss to make it th two third quarter goals for the Saints and to keep the pressure on and get it back out to that 28-point margin. Game high territory. Voss comes in. This one has hit the post. So Collingwood, a big let off. Lock here to bring it back in. Just trying to work out, Gary, in these politically correct times whether you can actually say probably should have taken the mark and injured the player in front of him. Well, you can because <laughs> this is a compact game. Oh, I think it's Jim. fantastic. I just like the terminology. Burns. He legitimately injured them. Cave in, it would have been 10 years ago, but <laughs> we've changed the way we speak about the game and a good thing too. Fisher. Handball back to Milne, who's been good today. Long ball forward from that player. Revolt stands under it. Over the back came Big Presti. Voss works with Shaw. Morrison taken out of it. Fairly, according to the umpire. Slung was Voss. And the ball will be tossed in. Talk, talk about Stephen Milne. Now, the thing I've liked about him is he hasn't anchored himself. He's been up and taken Tark and Lockyer away. You've got to be able to mix it up if it's not working for you. Buckley will mark. Right on the V6 Orient logo. <laughs> Lockyer. Low ball, Didak. He needs to fire as well. Onto his non preferred right foot. The kick is good to Swan. Marks right on 50. Don't think he can get the journey from there. Looking around indicates that he probably thinks it'll be borderline. Goes for the low kick. Beautiful. And the mark is taken by Ben Johnson. Yeah, and this might, might be what Collingwood are going to do too because their big gun forwards, their first start or first choice forwards aren't getting the job done. So all the focus and attention there was on Tarrant. It was also on Didak. They're keeping an eye on Thomas. And all of a sudden, this bloke sneaks out under the guard. Just five goals he's kicked this year, Benny Johnson. Comes in, lines it up. Oh, poster again. What Mick Mouldhouse is wrestling with is how long does he leave that forward line in place? They're not, they've only kicked six goals to date. They struggled last week. How long do we go with this before we try something a bit more radical? And that Johnson kick had some late banana about it. Fisher. Ackland. Holds it up. Waiting for the runners to come. Maguire. Over the top. Montagna's been terrific. Low ball forward. Oh, there it is. Brian, the Jukes. Get him out. What has happened to the Jukes of oh. the big G-man? He's paid a free kick, Ray. Ray's paid a free kick for some sort of a hold. 
holding the arms, I think, or knocking the arms. I mean, red hot. It's the new rule, but they don't call it every week. Yeah, that's the problem, Brian, is they start out the season absolutely yep. dynamite on that and dynamite on the 50 metre. Then it gets a bit lax, and then when they pay one, mm. all of a sudden it looks ridiculous. Yep. Worst accuracy of the top ten. The big boy. That looks good, though. It's right through the middle. I wonder, yeah, I'd love to, when it set Chris Jones a task, oh, he told us he was crook, that's right, he did tell us at half-time that that was why he came off the ground, but he hasn't had those dukes extended all day, has he? Yeah. No, but... Doesn't look like getting him out. You must extend them, Gary. But, I mean, if he's got some sort of a duke problem... Uh, I think you're cutting him... Uh, I may be, I may be cutting him too much slack. Duke slack. <laughs> 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 Fraser Gehrig's kicked a couple. The big man from the forward square. In the middle, Ricks and Fraser, nil all draw, and Buckley trying to work. Oh, he's stripped of the ball. League style by Fisher. <coughs> Fisher, a high ball. Rewalt. Clement did well, knocked down. Montagna, quick kick and goal across the face. And we'll have a boundary throw in. Look at that set up there. The ball comes in. Not a good saw. There's Dr. Smooth. Not a good sign in the Collingwood bench. Pendlebury, Davies, Rosling, Wakeley. Not a good sign when Nathan Buckley gets the ball ripped out of his hands. Kick it in. Contest. Three crummers at the feet. Desperate stuff from Montagna. The stack's on. We'll have a bounce. Really simple it was. It was just the ball went in. This is what the Magpies haven't had. Just a genuine contest. Crumb to the front. And there was two or three St Kilda players running onto it, including Montagna. Oh. Ray just having a word to Montagna saying I was going to bounce it, get out of my way. Fist away from Ricks. Little kick from Revolt only ended up with Dane Swan. There's a couple of bounces, three in fact. Good handball forward, but uh, Burns was hot. He was red hot. Ball over the top to the big goose Maguire. Now Del Santo can step on through. Thumping long ball from him. Fraser one out. Oh, did well, but Voss stripped him of the footy and then kicked a beautiful goal. The 150 man. Send the runner out to Dane Swan and just grab him and say, did you see what happened then? Del Santo got it and didn't think about running and bouncing three times. He kicked it first time, long to a one-on-one -on -one contest. Fraser Gehrig gives the contest. This is simple, Brian. Look at this. Kick it. Contest. Look at Swan, um, Voss. Front and square for the crumb. You kick a goal. Dane Swan wanted to run and bounce the ball three times. He had three forwards make leads who were out of position by the time he turned it over. Voss puts the Saints 35 up. Midway through this third quarter and a free to St Kilda as well. So Fim's starting to roll their way. I reckon if St Kilda get one more and they get it into the 40s, Gary... She's nearly done. And complicate the game, Brian. Fisher. Gehrig. He got the Jukes out then, which clearly shows me there's nothing wrong with them. Johnson. <laughs> Clement needs clean hands. Del Santo got the handball away. Just. Look at the pressure here. Look at the pressure. Loney. Look at the Johnson. pressure. Loney. Del Santo. It's great, Gary. Look at it. Montagna. Shaw. defenders they all walk back scratching their heads saying hey we don't like playing against forwards that actually compete revolt clean possession handball to del santo the beautiful mover long ball forward here he comes the big fella milne at his feet the snap oh it was hurried and it was a little uh, anxious oh dear i'll yeah. tell you that is the stuff that Dale Thomas and Tarrant and Rocker and Didak have got to try and impose when the ball gets in their area. They've got to try and keep it in. That passage of play is indicative of where the scores are at the moment and which team's in front, I reckon. St Kilda are just doing those sort of defensively pressurised things better. Lockyer. And now we've got stats for everything. I'd love to have a stat for the ball time inside forward 50. How much time the ball spends in there. Yeah. Because the inside 50s were very similar at half time. But how long it actually stayed there would be a telling statistic. Well, when you get a job, Gary, coaching, you'll be able to implement that straight into oh. your overall strategy. Jeez. Just 
thinking it won't be long the way you're behaving in the box today. Matter of time. Just seeing yeah. everything very clearly. Every other job I've had, you've just snipped me on your performance. Montagna threw it back into Goddard. Here's Swan, heavy and strong through the hips. Clement, but he's got to beat a couple. He really needs to. Fisher. Oh, bang on O'Brien. Play goes on. The courier. And Ray comes in with a very powerful whistle. Good Collingwood players arise to this challenge and enjoy the contest, enjoy the physical nature of it. The really good ones will. The other ones will just think, oh, it's a bit too hard. Buckley and Lecuria, they all step up. Fraser down. Rex wrapped up in a tackle. Released the ball. Ball was taken high. And he'll get a free. Just wondering when you do take over a club. Gary, whether you'll have big... Brian on your staff, find a spot for the big boy. Teach him a bit about the Jukes. No. Sit. No. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Inside the oh, 50. Rebound! Beautiful presentation again. And a terrific one grab mark. Well, I'll tell you what, this is a man, if you ever did, you'd love to have him on your side because uh, he just does, he just plays pure footy. Just works hard, presents well, takes front spot every single time. He just got to get his kicking right. And if Brian could iron that out, he could get a job anywhere. For goal number 13 for the Saints, that's a way to the right. Burns off and Pendlebury on and Nick Rewalt for just the one part of the game that he's... He didn't struggle with this part of the game early, did he? No, he did not. So he it's was there. a beautiful kick early yeah. in the piece. Look at the uncertainty in this Collingwood defence. Loney. Shaw to Loney. Had to tuck it around the corner. and It's fingertip precision that'll be brought undone with the pressure that St Kilda are applying if they continue. Fraser turns around. has got penalty loose. He'll mark this. Fraser tries to run him down. Penelbury gives it to the runner, Buckley squares it up from the point of the square. Long ball, now dynax has got space to work his man. What can Baker do to close this gap down? dynax has got it on the boundary line. And Baker, smother was great. That's what he can do. Yeah, there may be Anthony Rocker clean him up. Dynak might have got around him, Jim. Mm. Thrown in inside the 50. Fist from the skipper ball, forward. Reese Shaw, overran it. Fiora picked it up to Powell to Harvey. They've just got a good look about in the Saints. Harvey's kick fantastic to Voss. Voss kicked it straight into the head of Fiora and then got it back. He goes to Fraser who is knackered after running the length of the ground. Look at the big fella. Got the kick back into play well. Fiora comes back onto the ball. And in the end, Heath Shaw happy to see it over the line. Simon Prestigicamo, boys, has come up a little bit sore after last tackling attempt. Left shoulder, I reckon. 37 points, and Presti's holding that Free shoulder. Kick. Free kick way off the footy. Way off the footy. He's in trouble, Presti. Reese Shaw asking why, and it's going to go St Kilda's way. Yeah. And this is Ray Chamberlain. No, it's not. Not Razor this time. It was paid by Matthew James. Long way off the footy. Oh. Ray just organising the man on the mark and Presti Giacomo looks okay now, a little. He's still holding the arm. He may have got a stinger. Stinger. Rewald Ooh. from right on the 50 arc. In he comes. Kick on the way. Looks great. It's swinging a little. It's there. He loves it. You can just feel... You can feel something building for the Saints. They've been, uh, by their own admission, up and down this year. But I don't know. There's a bit of a look about them. There's a bit of a s some sort of spirit that has come back into the side over since that break. I don't know what they did up at Bonnie Doon, Jim, but by Jingos. They were great against Hawthorne. And just the real enthusiasm seeping through. Clearly, it was the serenity at Bonnie Doon that fixed them <laughs> up, Gaz, because they're back on track, the Saints. Oh, no, because that's all that's there. <laughs> <laughs> hooked it to Buckley. Thomas came off the line. Peckett. Acklin. 
Reese Shaw to Fraser. Josh just sits and waits. Goes to Buckley. And Buckley hangs onto the ball for the moment. Davies just outside the 50. Boys, Tarrant Rocker yet to touch the footy at all in this third quarter. Dale Thomas, the other forward who started has had just one just then, a little hurried handball. Kick from Davies. Oh, you got to get to the top of the square. Pretty ordinary. Oh, yeah. It's out in the fault. That is uh, pathetic, I'm afraid. Uh, no impact again. So what the question again is, how long do you persevere with Tarrant and Rocker as the key forwards when it's just not working for them? It's where Presti hurt his shoulder. He's been taken off the ground now, and Wakeland has come on. In the meantime, St Kilda under pressure and defence. Harvey, quick release to Rewalt. Not much on here for Rewald at the moment. Decides to go long to a contested situation. Loney and Goddard. Goddard good in the air. Beat him hands down. Loney never even got a mitt near it. He's got a bit of Nathan Buckley about him, this boy, I reckon. Brendan Goddard, I know that's as big a compliment cool. as he could pay. Goddard, centering high ball. Voss, Thomas, dropped the mark. Allowed the opposite number 13 to come through. Gave it up to Fiora. Around the body. 49 point lead, St Kilda. Tenth goal kicker for the Saints. Wake up call for Collingwood. And the form against sides inside the top eight has been not impressive. They've lost four out of six against top eight sides. This will be five out of seven. If they, as it looks like, they go down. Just a big wake-up call for this uh, side who've got enormous talent. who are just struggling against the quality opposition. Four in a row for the Saints. Starting to really impose themselves on this game and you suspect the competition. Yeah, I reckon the competition is sitting up, Jim. I really do because they've... Always promised pre-season flag favourites. Hamill on the way back. Kaczynski on the way back. I know there's plenty of work to do. A bit of a look about them. Certainly cracking in. And that's got to be the start of it, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And I reckon Grant Thomas would be absolutely delighted with the way that this game has unfolded so far. Ackland and Rocker. Ball taken to ground. Milne, a big punch forward. Peckett, eyes only for the ball. Del Sando, again, the first option and pretty much always the best option. Voss, on the up to Montagna, taken out of it legally. Heath Shaw to Reese Shaw on the outer side. Reese Shaw, short ball to Buckley. On the wing, Buckley. Steading, chipping ball. Didak was being held, no free. Could have easily been. Fisher smacks on through and did really well under heavy pressure. Yeah, doesn't matter how you get the job done. Stephen Baker has got Alan Didak on a very tight leash at the moment. Five and a half minutes remaining and there's Rusling under the ground. Looking a little cold. Fraser gets it to the square. Free Couldn't kick. get hold of it. Peck it. Free kick to Collingwood Lockyer. Yep. In and the Peckett spot. can't believe it. He didn't even know he had it then, Tucker Lockyer. He's running no. back to zone up. You're quite right. Now the goal umpire's having a word as well with the field umpire, but you're right, Gary. It'll come back and it'll be a Collingwood free to Lockyer. Neither player even knew no. that that was on. Not much in it, was there, when you look at it? So a lucky break here. Look at... The leader of the cheer squad just sitting back there a couple of rows back. Joffa. Jacket just Not happy. Away. Lock here. Spent most of the day on Stephen Milne as Tarkin Lock here. Well, you take it when you come your way. As a defender, I guess there's three kicks that have gone against you from time to time that you don't think fair, so just grab a hold of them. Couldn't see much in that to get excited about. 
it's uh, Justin Pickett who's coming to the twilight of his career has been uh, pretty solid. Badly. Anthony Rocker in the ruck. Yes, sorry, Gaz. Sorry, uh, Gaz. Badly needed goal there for Collingwood. There's Anthony Rocker. It's a half forward. Off the knees of Buckley. Puts a very good tackle on. He's played a lone hand today, Nathan Buckley. Del Santo around the body. Rocker back here. Virtually uncontested. And some bronx cheers from the Collingwood faithful. Thomas. Again to Buckley. Davies. High ball forward. Fraser and Tarrant back here. And Dynak at ground level. Very committed to the footy. Maguire's got it between his legs. And the umpire wants it. Uh, the Bronx cheers for Anthony Rocker. I think I'm not a fan of the Bronx cheers as a rule, but both these marks have been taken across half back as a sort of floating ruckman. Fraser. No ruck work. Both players. Holding each other, Ricks, Del Santo, backward ball, gives Maguire a bit of time ever so briefly to sum up the options. Now, Rock has had three possessions in a minute. Centres the ball and finds Burns. Hit one from a touch closer earlier in the quarter. This one will have to travel an extra couple. He elects not to. Gives it to Clement. Now he can run. Get some momentum. He goes long. It's a good-looking ball. The black and white. You just get a little bit of a feeling, Gary. Well, we hope so, Brian, for the sake of the game. But, well, Grant Thomas now will sit there and say, OK, we're not letting the bloke who's badly out of touch take easy, uncontested marks behind the footy. So whoever's in the ruck at the moment's got to understand that and go and make Rocker accountable. Run away from him. Uh, James Clement just drifted down on Nick Revolt. They let that go. So... Their, their concentration things more than anything else that they're going to have to tighten up on. But uh, next goal for the Magpies will make it interesting. Long range goal there from James Clement. Back in the centre. And the ball's locked up. Furious Nick Revolt then, Gaz, because uh, he was screaming at someone to man James Clement as Chris Jones is on the boundary. Well, the Pies only have two players on the bench at the moment. Preston Giacomo in the rooms with a shoulder. Paul Lecurio has also just gone down into the rooms. Kick forward again. A little mini run here for the Pies. Fraser taken to ground. No free. Fisher to Del Santo. Nothing down the line for him. He's just got to hang on to the ball. Well, Ricks has just run hard away from his opposition ruckman. Montagna. Has it over the top. There, and there's Anthony Rocker's man right there. Ricks has it now. Pretty stagnant. I think this is where they just say, well, yeah, that's not a great kick. Just hoist it long and see what can happen here. Voss gets a fist in to a dangerous bottle, although it's all Collingwood here. Can Fraser create a bit of physical havoc? Look at Milne step on through. The donut! from the big boy, tries another one on Lakeland. Just got a bit confused. A double, don't argue. <laughs> he was on his right boot, which didn't help. <laughs> Morrison now, I tell you what, we've got 2.24 remaining in the quarter. St Kilda needed to hang onto the ball there. They didn't. Well, I think Rick's kicked when he wasn't supposed to. As a rule. They've yeah. coughed it up, though, Collingwood. Now St Kilda a chance. Can they do it better this time? Rewalt gives them a good start by getting it to Voss. Now, they need to control the ball from here. Voss. Garrick's got his defender in the right spot. Off hands, Morrison. Lockyer has a bit of a bow peep to make sure the coast is clear, and he sees that it is. Stops. He will have to go down the line. He does. Shaw's got to beat Rewalt and Fisher and Peckett. Three on one. The Ricks handball. Rewalt. Fisher. 1.37 remaining in the quarter. Oh, Garrick wasn't watching. He thought Fisher was going long to the square and Fraser had his back to the play. Well, in the end, he couldn't because Fraser was there. Revolt was down the other end. Here's Nick Revolt just saying, get my man, get my man. I'm on the mark. I'm on the mark. Cover for me. <laughs> and no one did. He was filthy. Powell high to the square. Almost Ackland. He's going to do it himself. The big man gets it to Milne. Don't bother about it.
Very good cramming exhibition from Stephen Mill, and I reckon uh, he's appreciated the fact that there's been a little bit more uh, predictability in the way they go forward. He has been front and square. That is just footy terminology for being at the front of the pack. On almost every occasion. He really has been in a good position today and has given himself the best shot to get those crumbs. That's his bread and butter. And he's now got three goals. The leading goal kicker on the ground. A mini challenge by Collingwood has ceased as Milne kicks his third and St Kilda lead by 43 points. Davies. Reshaw. Cracking in hard was McWalder. They can score again here, the Saints. Powell, bit of fancy footwork. Ackland in the square. Off hands, Fraser Garrick. Can he recover? No. Lockyer now just to tidy things up for the Pies. Gets it to Pendlebury. Love to sneak a late one, Collingwood. Across the ground to Wakeland. Thomas on short. He's going to do it from back here. Back to Loney. Loney. To Swan. He's trying to get into the... Uh, you think they're eight up. Three-quarter time break unscathed by the look of it. They're a long way down. Now, this is not a coaching thing. This is a player-driven thing, Gary. Surely, Brian. You, you don't play like this when you're eight down. Or... It's contagious, I reckon. One player sees another do it and think, oh, that's what we've got to do. Mm -hmm. Well, it has left them with a very, very tall order. Boys, Anthony Rocker, Chris Tarrant, Alan Didak, yet to score a goal for the Magpies. They've contributed 41% of their goals this year. That is an idea of where this game is at exactly. St Kilda have been fantastic and they go in at three quarter time 15 8 98 a 43 point margin over the magpies 8 7 have held them in reasonable stead shane o'brien great case in point boys been very good this year he has had just six touches today stephen powell's done a marvelous job on him he's averaging 23 a game o'brien uh, as i said buckley aside not much to get excited about let's go down to chris jones on the boundary well, not good news for the Pies, Gary, at all. Simon Prestigiacomo still hasn't emerged from the rooms. Of course, he injured his shoulder in that third term. Now, in the Saints camp, Stephen Baker got a lot of work done uh, on his leg, just above his left knee. He had it strapped heavily. He didn't have any coaching during that uh, third term, uh, three-quarter time break. The coaches then called him across and had a chat to him. But just as Stephen Baker does, he strapped it up, and he'll be out there for this last quarter. Got Corky written all over that one. Uh, for Stephen Baker, that's where you can see him there, just uh, continuing to stretch. Done a great job on Didak, boys. As mentioned as we went to the break, Alan Didak and uh, Chris Tarrant and Anthony Rocker have kicked 88 goals between them this year. They've been dangerous, a dangerous triumvirate. They've got none. Brian, not a good result in a game that is big and one that will decide a lot for Collingwood this year. Well, do you try and mix it up? They haven't, it, to me, it hasn't appeared to as if they've gone too different in that forward half. That man can go down there, Nathan Buckley, but without him, Jim, in the middle of the ground, it mightn't even get there. Well, you're robbing Peter to pay Paul there, aren't you? You're relying on someone else to step up and actually win it. He's got his concerns, Michael Malthouse. They were pretty ordinary last week against the Tigers, and uh, everyone expected them to bounce back. I must admit I was one of them and really fire in today, but... St Kilda have had all the answers from the 10-minute mark onwards. Buckley is indeed going forward, although he started the third quarter outside the centre square, found himself inside it not long after it, but you've got to change the mix. Rock has gone into the ruck. He's going to full forward, Nathan Buckley. I like it. I like it. He can keep. He could end up with 44 possessions, but without the goals, it's going to make no difference. So might as well play him at full forward, see if they can get something out of him. Rocker in the ruck. He's not fit, Anthony Rocket. Brian, you could beat him in a race around the oval at the moment. He, uh, I am not sure if he's injured or he hasn't been able to do the work, but he is not fit at all. Now, you talk about him hands on knees. He always does that, Gary. Look, the game hasn't started and he's doing yeah, that. Yeah. And then he didn't move for about five minutes in his last contest. Start of the final quarter here. 43 points adrift. The Magpies Pendlebury gives them the first clearance, although not effective. Picked up ball, advanced it forward and... Powell did well. Harvey now around the corner and finds Del Santo. 
Nick Del Santo hasn't been absolutely sensational, though he is St Kilda's leading possession getter. <laughs> Has he been great or not? Yeah, no, he's been pretty good. No, not great. Not great, but pretty damn good. Well, I did protect myself by saying hasn't been sensational <laughs> in, in uh, well, believe it, guys. <laughs> in time that he might have been all right. Graham from the middle of the ground. Long ball. Maguire. And Burns going at it. Collingwood 3 to 1. Can't win it. Boundary line beats all. Nick Del Sano's been pretty good with 9 <laughs> <laughs> He had Lecuria for most of the first half. It was even in terms of touches, but Del Santos gets great value for his. Work down to Stephen Powell. Over the top to Xavier Clark. Lockyer was good to Burns. Shaw. Long ball. And Lee Fisher takes what was in the end an uncontested mark to Del Santo. Just... Just going, Des. <laughs> oh, now, you guys are going to go the whole quarter on me. I withdraw my comment. All right? Too late, Brian. Ball back to the skipper. And he goes to Stephen Powell, who just slipped, but got the handball forward to Graham. Dangerous long ball user. Very dangerous. Just went back. He's been a good pickup. There's Jason Graham and just a lack of urgency. I like the way Powell's gone about this, boys. He's played for his footy life. He knows that he's got to keep coming up, otherwise he won't get in the side. But Dane Swan, too slow. Too slow to close him down, Stephen Powell. Powell even slipped when he got possession of that footy. But uh, he still had time to get up and get a handball off. And Graham, a beautiful finish. Coming off half-back, O'Brie, his opponent. Dirty day for O'Brie. St Kilda a flyer in the last quarter. Graham kicked the first goal of the third quarter and now the first goal of the last quarter. Just his third career goal. Strangely enough, his ball out of the middle. Clark now pursued by three or four Maggies. Rocker. It's tight. It's heavy. In the middle at the moment and I think the ball will be balled up by umpire Ray Chamberlain. Chris Jones, boundary side. Well, there's some good news for the Pies. Simon Presser G. Como back out from the rooms. Now, this is where it happened. He injured that left shoulder. Uh, he's back out. If they desperately need him, I'm sure that he could come back on. 48,564, the crowd number. Long ball forward from Swan to Buckley. And Nathan Buckley has it deep. And will go back to Burns unselfishly. And Burns will take it 30 out. 48, 5, 64, Brian uh, suggests we might have just knocked off that record, Bryzer. It's a funny one, isn't it? Because they said it was a 100% sellout here today. Well, I've been told since a few Medellin club members okay. didn't turn up, Gary, and uh, Good point. thus were a few thousand short. Burns with the set shot. It looks good. That's because it is. Well, Nathan Buckley goes forward and now starts to, uh, I think that's the first inside 50 for the quarter. He marks the footy and puts it on the chest of Burns and kicks the goal. So you wonder why when you've got those other big guns down there, they can't do a similar thing. It's just what makes great players great and other players... a yeah, good day for you, Gary. You called it early that you thought this would be a move that would work and first forward 50 entry. On fire. <laughs> Back in the middle, Collingwood get their first of the last. Burns gets his second. Fraser, no go. Clark, ball and Voss combine along with the help of Harvey. Harvey a chiselling ball to Rewalt on the lead. No need for Dukes then, he had his man done. No, Dukic didn't need him because Clement was going to be unable to get a defensive fist to him. Right. Robert Harvey, just a... He continues to go. Ooh, I would have liked to have seen him. Sign of a good player that can extend and mark at full speed, Gary. Mm. Rewalt from beyond 50, carrying the line, marked right on the line by Voss. And it has been paid. Well, I was just looking at some other stats then. I'd like to know who was on the goal line for Collingwood taking the big run up and killing any marking contest. Boss will come in and kick his second goal. 
He has got it. And St Kilda have been in superb form today. They've been magnificent. Nick Revolt has been great. Voss, as I said, he's just taking the hammer roll down there as that third tool. Who's on the line here for Collingwood? Who's the ruckman that should just kill that contest? That is not good at all, I'm afraid. Gentlemen, I don't know where the ruckman was. Where big... Uh, who's in the ruck? Josh Fraser. Not sure where he was. That can't be allowed to happen. That's a sign of a side that's just going. Couple of goals for Voss in his 150th game. Fraser sits under the footy. Ricks wins it down. Powell collected in the centre and the umpire wants it. Now this will bring a tear to the eyes of you two uh, former champion forwards. Imagine presenting up to this sort of prune. Robert Harvey just sits it in front. Gary not blistering it at you, just sitting it up nicely so you can make your way to the ball. Beautiful. How many hundred gold bags would Brian have had if that was the sort of delivery he got week after week? The pie's a chance here. They're going to bounce it forward, but Maxi Hudson's back there. And he gets it off to Ball, and Ball's got the good, big goose in the quiet. Very, very good today. And he slides it to uh, Stephen Powell. Right foot ball. Looks to Ricks. Gets it to him. He goes back to Powell. And there is Montagna. We spoke about him at half time. He's been very good. That wasn't his best. Fraser takes it. Well, Santo's in trouble, boys. He's in the four, uh, back 50 with O'Brien. He won't be able to pick O'Brien up. I reckon he might be crook, Gary. He got one in the... Because yeah, here it comes to his man, and he was taking a drink out of the water bottle while that was happening. Uh, he got cleaned up in the last contest. O'Brien to Pendlebury. Got to go hard. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Luke Ball. Sensational work. Would have been a certain Collingwood goal. And now Baker. Yeah. Now, look at Del Santo behind play. Yeah, he's got to get off the ground because he can't. There's a round of applause acknowledging the courageous effort of Luke Ball. And there he is, Del Santo. Looks okay there, but he's got nothing in the legs at the this moment. This is where it is here in that marking contest. I think he just landed awkwardly. Del Santo with a beautiful kick. Out wide to Ricks. Feeding Montagna. Who was a pretty clean and tidy looking player. Back of the pack, Morrison. Shaw. Through it. Reese Shaw. Didak. Wonderful clean hands at ground level. Interesting ball inside to Pendlebury. That centre half back. He goes with the long ball. Tarrant to fly. Big climb from Tarrant. Handball to Lecuria. And Rocker will uh, hit this ball. Hudson with him, but a good mark taken. In fact, it was Maguire, Rocker's direct opponent. That was a clever mark from Anthony Rocker, and that's a big mark from Chris Tarrant. Sadly, Gaz, <laughs> haven't seen enough of either of them. Well, pre-game, that's what we were sort of uh, salivating about, the prospect of Revolt and Gehrig and those boys at one end, and then Tarrant doing exactly that up the ground. And belting it down to this bloke, doing that at, the, at um, the last line. But make no mistake, if you're just switching on for the first time, that is the first time that both of those players have looked anything like the players of the reputation that they've got. No goals from either of them. Tarrant or Rocket. Here comes Anthony. Shot looks like it's drifting right. It has been a dirty day for the big forwards. A lot of movement out there today with the ball. It does always swing left to right at that end, but more than normal today. Roof has been open for the entire day today. No rain on the radar at all. Expecting some in Melbourne during the week. Hudson. Graham's kicked a couple today. Graham. And here he is being involved in this play. A couple of bounces now, so the free-running Graham. The drawing handball wide to ball. Got time to sum up the options and goes to Rewalt low and hard. Had a little too much on it. Well, Chris Tarrant is down there. I'm wondering whether he's been moved on to Nick Rewalt. I reckon he has. And uh, fair enough, too, if he's going to go down there. Maybe get an idea. No, he's, uh, he's not. I reckon that wouldn't have been a bad move. Clement goes back to Rewalt. Ricks, just a little hand down. Fraser picks it up into the centre. Fisher and Buckley. Oh, well done, Fisher. Just the awareness. Knew Goddard was behind him. Handball to the other Fisher. 
Long, long ball forward. Voss couldn't get uh, his two hands to the ball. Goddard and Sam Fisher trading the ball there, Gaz. They've got a combined golf handicap of five. This is frightening. It is. Players can be that good at another sport when they're meant to be playing football professionally. <laughs> it's a disgrace. <laughs> but he locked up inside. The Red. board 50 will have a bounce. You play four times a week. Exactly. With a handicap of 18. Can't get anywhere near him. Boils down to ability, man. <laughs> Luke, good to Luke Ball back into some good touch. Baker today. With the thigh strapped or hamstring. Let's hope not a hamstring, but corky, I reckon, bro. Corky in the thigh, yeah. Fisher and Buckley healing for the free, and he milked it nicely. There was a little bit of holdy holds there, but he made it look better than it was. And why not? Look at these things. You're the man behind just pointing out to Buckley I'm not sure why the way they, things have gone today. The two goals, Nathan, I think he was telling you. <laughs> Buckley's kick is short, and that man would be having the last laugh now because Goddard has gobbled it up. Those applause from the St Kilda fans, uh, obviously they're loving the fact that Nathan Buckley made his first mistake, but they can also be taken as acknowledging just one of the champions of all time. He just says, here you go. <laughs> and he shows the crowd the ball. For a minute. Oh, look at the crowd going up there. Oh, could you imagine some of the choice words coming his way at the moment? No, he won't like that either, Bucks. He's not prone to that exaggeration. Tackle from behind here, dispossessing. So who's got the last laugh out of this? Uh, Collingwood have. He just hung that out in frustration, but. He would then want to hit the target, and he didn't, and he'd be a bit embarrassed about oh. that. What he needs to do, Gaz, is get away from the boundary line. <laughs> find a reason to get into the centre of the ground. <laughs> Reese Shaw has a handball back over the top to Swan. He's closed down by Del Santo. Harvey picks it up, free kick. Gee, I tell you what. Hey, just got to keep their heads here, the Saints. So a little, all of a sudden, there's a little bit of uh, something about it that's been missing all day. Swan long, Maguire in good position. Oh, it's been a, a marquee day for Big Goose. Oh, oh look, look at him. Anthony Rock is a deal. Fair dinkum. What is he doing? I'm not sure <laughs> why the umpire needed to say anything. If there wasn't going to be a 50, just let him move on with the ball. As Brendan Goddard has three bounces. And then inboard to Montagna. There's a bit of chest pumping going on at the moment that hasn't been there all day. Graham, Xavier Clark evades a couple. Left foot ball, Voss pushed out of it. And Morrison took a good mark. Chad to Wakeland. Inboard, Pendlebury. One of the youngsters Colin would expect to take them into the next 10 years or so. Young man in just his fifth senior game of footy. Now Morrison, short to Lockyer. Collingwood have not been really in the game all day. St Kilda have been more ferocious and cut out any little bursts that they've had. Here is Harvey intercepting. Now Rewalt's free if he can get the ball around the corner. He oh. does, but oh, Lockyer, oh, and in the meantime, ducked into the hole. Well, Harvey had three choices to choose from. And Voss made his first blow, too. Jeez, there's been some ordinary foot use in the last minute or so. It's going to end up with Max Hudson. Can one, he Max. kick a rare goal, Maxi? <laughs> Just have a dip out <laughs> on the full. <laughs> He ran himself in and out of trouble about four times. He was trying to turn a standard <laughs> attempt into goal of the year. Then. <laughs> if we're going to get one, you're going to remember it for he a went, long time. He went the double zigzag and hoped that something <laughs> special would happen. Remarkable stuff from Max Hudson, who has been a great defender today. Yeah, he's played beautifully. Yeah, he's almost your ideal opponent for Chris Tarrant, isn't he? Is he an All-Australian? Do you yeah, think Gaz yeah, at this stage? He'd have to find a spot for him, surely. Gee, a lot of people think Mel Michael's in great touch up in Brisbane, Gary. We don't have to play full back, Maxie Hudson. Well, they don't play anyone, do they? No, they can just play back pocket or back six. Good thing about the All Australian selectors are never answerable oh, for someone that doesn't get a kick. You just pick your best 22, Brian. Yeah. You're putting your hand up, Ryder. No. Job. I'm just talking about the current ones, Gary. 
not happy with the job they're doing? It's a plum job. I'd like to see Brian on the panel. Oh, oh, right. We might start the campaign. Yep. We so would have a team that could play someone at the end, I could tell you. Well, you'd bang the table at the um, meetings, I reckon, Brian. You'd whip them into shape. So there are all these prima donnas you two have put forward. <laughs> Look at Fraser elevate over the top there. Are we sure? I'd like to see Brian at the uh, AFL boardroom. Just yeah. walked in there That's with it. Jared Healy and Kevin Bartlett and the boys and say, Brian, just... Hey. Just slap the, the the crocodile skin briefcase down and say, just listen up. <laughs> Barry Bickley, he'd be there saying nothing <laughs> to upset anyone ever as Wakeland comes through. Thomas, Who's all he there? does is read the NAB ad on the Sunday <laughs> footy show and that's all he does for the whole show. Just have to get the catering up, uh, Jim, if Big Brian was going to attend. <laughs> Nathan Buckley, the leading position winner on the ground. Rocker. Uncontested in the ruck. Burns. Penbury selling some candy. Sink slip along. Tarrant one out with his man. Goose getting back. Tarrant kept his eye on the ball. Found Buckley. Buckley centering kick. Fraser's got good body possession on Ricks. Ricks did him. Knocked it down to Fiora. Fraser follows up. And St Kilda in the end will tidy up. Off the boot of the former Tiger. Fiora. And ball over the top to Graham. Been a good game from him. Sits it out in front of Lee Fisher. Got rid of Shaw and will pick it up on the wing. Steps on through. Low ball looking for Revolt. Very tough for the forward. He uh, went to ground in pursuit of the ball. And that enabled the Pies to bring it away. Morrison. Out wide to Burns. Touches the footy on the ground and then goes back by hand to Reese Shaw. Here's the little one to Pendlebury. Sting obviously gone right out of this one. Yep, Tarrant and Garrick both coming off for their respective sides. Sam Fisher, the fist away from Buckley. And the ball will be thrown in. Yes, Luke Ball at, uh, well, no, number 14, St Kilda Guernsey once again is going to take up full forward. Of course, Tony Lockett will 14 for a while, but Luke Ball, the unlikely target down there at the moment. It's a reasonable month ahead of them, the Saints. Walter. There's another bounce. If they can carry the last two weeks into that month, there are all sorts of uh, a chance to really put a cat among the pigeons. The ball, <laughs> this is over the top, and the umpire lets it sit for a long time before he's going to bounce it. The uh, Collingwood Footy Club, their next month looks like this. They've got the Dockers and... The West Coast Eagles, the two Perth clubs, both here in Melbourne, so that's a good result for them. Rocker high. Graham tries the one-hander. Well, they're going to win a game against the top eight side before the finals come around. We expect them to play, but, gee, they've been disappointing when the big games have been on. Mark in the end here. Gone. Gone. By Thomas, who bit off a bit more than he could chew. And just a bit of yak to go that Milne oh. plays on. Didn't go behind the man on the mark, so he'll come off. Robert Harvey coming off for a spell. And yeah, they're just pushing him around. St Kilda are pushing Collingwood around at the moment. That's a young man, Thomas. I know you can't do much, but you've got to fly the flag. Handball from Milda Graham. Graham goes for goal number three. The altitude looks good. It's about distance, and it's not there. Wakeland, last line of defence. Five and a half minutes remaining. Big confidence booster here for the Saints. Wins in the last three weeks over Sydney and Hawthorne. Doesn't take as the Saints long to get the yap back into their act. No, it doesn't. They've got a couple of good ones out there, but you've got to have that sort of level of arrogance, Absolutely. I reckon. And uh, they deserved it today. They've been all over Collingwood. They really have in every department. Thomas and Lecuria. It's not to say you'd wipe it in the face. You've got to respect your opponents, but you've got to sort of signal that you're up and about. And uh, I reckon they've earned the right today. The Saints have been very, very good indeed. Seven wins for the year. This will make it win number eight. And put them in a reasonable position to attack the latter half of the year. They really needed a win today to stay in contention for a top four berth. Look at the rocker kick. Big ball, isn't it? Fraser. St Kilda fly as well. Clark now. Ground level went the left foot oh, spiral. Left foot Tory. Went pretty high, didn't have a lot of journey on it. Voss, Wakeland got him high. 
Ray deciding he wouldn't blow the whistle on this occasion and another high tackle. Ray's telling them to play on. Good decision in the end, Fiora. Perhaps another high tackle and Ray just says play on again. <laughs> I've worn the whistle out. Montagna steps inside 50. Opens up the door, Ricks. Ooh. Attempting slips catch, always hard when they land short of the cordon, JB. Yeah, tired boys out there at the moment. Tough to dive forward, no question. Johnson over the top to uh, Morrison. The Saints at the start of the year, pretty much everyone's choice. Gaz for the best yes. Melbourne team in the comp. And I think your old mob, the D's, have reefed that away from him. Let's go down to Chris Jones. Well, you mentioned Chris Tarrant came off. He actually came off hobbling and it injured his left foot. He took his boot off as soon as he got to the boundary line. The jacket's on now. His day's over. I noticed not one trainer or medico went to him, though, so it would have been something they'd known about coming into the game, I reckon. Good mark taken by Fisher. I reckon the Western Bulldogs uh, supporters have rightfully stick their mid up at the moment yep. and say that they're also very much... Uh, the flag bearer for Victorian base clubs. Yeah, but I reckon the Demons, with 10 of their last 11, have been quite just staggering. Ha happy to have that or just play it down. So don't attempt to just uh, muddy the water, <laughs> Gary, with any rubbish. We're, uh, <laughs> we're dealing with a quality act in your old mob. Uh, they're going OK. This side um, ran into them, and at that stage it was level pegging, but Collingwood have now lost three of their last four. Yeah. Three of those teams' uh, finals contenders. Fisher. To Powell around the corner. Del Santo's gonna have to sit and wait for this. And the ball's killed from behind and over the line. So we're in the last three minutes. And as I said, the sting's really eased its way out of this one. But the St Kilda Footy Club up and about. Robbie Harvey and Baker will both had terrific days given the luxury of sitting and watching. Tackled was Davies, Penelbury there as well. And Empire said, you had an opportunity, young man. I'm going to have to penalise you. Handball comes off to the run here. For the Saints. And he has to retreat. To Fiora. Uh, kicked six goals last week, Collingwood against Richmond. Uh, obviously the condition's not great, although after half time, much drier. Today, they're going to come up. Oh, what a mark to revolt against Clement. Been a good battle, that. Interesting hold by Jimmy Clement after Rewalt went to ground there. Have a look at this. It was a beautiful kick. And um, Rewalt will line up from directly in front. Here he goes. Well, you had him a bit low, Brian. Had him... Uh, what are you suggesting? <laughs> Hopper. You're a squizzer. <laughs> As Rewalt comes in from 52. Long ball. Looks good. Cool. Nick Revolt plays at a level that really drops below excellent. He's a star. He's kicked three. He's had another really big afternoon. Ten marks. I just want to oh, see what Brian's talking about. Let me have a look at this. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> he just refuses to miss a beat, Big Brian. <laughs> He's on fire, Brian. <laughs> Oh, boy. Oh, my word. What happened here, Brian? Oh, Whoa. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, boy, Jimmy. Jimmy. Clement. Did it hop away the accident there, Brian? Gee. Mate, no one in the ground picked that up except you, big man. <laughs> Back in the middle. Not long to go on the clock, but that's given us something more <laughs> oh, to think about. <laughs> Players converging here, and we'll have another ball up in the middle. Oh, dear me. Mm. Well tough for Collingwood still got enough wins under their belt Gary with the nine they've got so far to do plenty of damage no, they do but uh, it is a worry for them Mick Malthouse himself said you're kidding yourself if we if you're putting us down as one of the real power sides we've got a lot of work to do and I would agree with him because uh, I've seen them the last two weeks I know it's hard to assess them on just two losses but they have not been impressive at all minute to go Peckett junk footy at the moment because the result is a foregone conclusion and has been for a while now as Goddard long ball rewalt. Off hands Lockyer. Did well O'Bree. Didac combining with that man now O'Bree. Selling some candy beautifully. And O'Bree sweeping to the middle to Anthony Rocker. 
has had a couple of opportunities to mark today, hasn't been able to pull them in. Del Santo, Montagna, oh. building, oh. Goose, McGuire. Look at him celebrate that one. The big man who I think Jim you hit on the nail, hit the nail on the head four weeks ago was battling. He came back with the best on ground performance here a couple of weeks ago against Barry Hall and hasn't looked back. There's Anthony Rocker involved in that contest. And then uh, away he goes, Matty Maguire. He's had a very good afternoon. And that's a nice way to finish off. The Ross Glendening of the modern era, Gary, that's the reason why. Because <laughs> with a big chest and a big presence, he can run forward and slot one for you from centre-half back. Here is Rosling around the body. High in the Buckley direction. And that's very nicely done by Hudson, refusing to concede anything, even when the siren's about to sound. And there it is. A 60-point win for St Kilda and a super impressive performance by the boys from Moorabbin. No doubt about that, Jim. That is a 10-goal belting. They gave them a three-goal start, the Saints. They gave the Pies a three-goal start and then belted them. The biggest loss for Collingwood in 2006. And, uh, well, if you are Grant Thomas or if you're a St Kilda supporter that has been... On the edge of your seat about just how good this side is and whether opportunity may have passed them by, then you'd be sadly mistaken because their form over the past two weeks since the mid-season break reinforces what, I guess, uh, why some of the experts, so-called experts around town, suggest that they're a premiership chance prior to this season kicking off. Let's go down to the man who uh, will remember always his 150th game. Brett Boss is with Chris Jones. Gee, they're making a big loud noise, the Saints fans. Congratulations, Brett. A great day for you, 150th. Yeah, it certainly was. To uh, beat a top side like Collingwood is exactly what we needed. Just some real momentum building at the Saints at the moment, isn't there? Yeah, it certainly is, but it's built on the simple things, so we keep doing those week in, week out for we'll a show. JB mentioned Bonnie Doon during the call. Tell us about that, because that seems to have brought the boys together. Uh, yeah, it probably did, but it probably just getting back to all those things that, uh, you know, we, we forgot about and we lost track of and worried about results and all that sort of stuff, and uh, yeah, we just want to go into the causes and all that sort of stuff. All right, we'll go and celebrate it. Well done. Yeah, thanks very much. Celebrate indeed, Brett Ross. A man of even fewer words than his brother who doesn't uh, furnish us with many, Gary. No, but he's been a good player, hasn't he? Very Just good. Uh, has the best move of all time coming to St Kilda because in his own right he's now established himself as a quality player. We'll talk about St Kilda as Collingwood trudge from the ground. One player, I would think, and one player only could put his hand out at the end of the game, and that is a sad indictment on a side that went in third on the ladder. You're referring to Nathan Buckley, Gary? Oh, of course. No one else, I could imagine, uh, would be put, proud to put that game in their highlights tape. But they are gone down the race, and the Saints are out there just acknowledging what has been a big crowd and great support. Some really good signs, too. Luke Ball back to some really good touch. Maguire obviously played a great game. Stephen Powell on O'Brien boys. Uh, he got some competition for places because uh, there aren't... 22 places only, obviously, and there's uh, some players that aren't in this side that'll come back in. Well, one of our favourites here, Manny Maguire, he was superb. He's with Chris Jones. He was fantastic today, and I reckon you enjoyed that goal at the end too. Yeah, look, it was nice to us. Hang on, I was a bit overdue. I haven't been kicking them lately, so uh, nice to sneak down. I think uh, a couple of the other backline boys got a couple as well, which was good to see. And Maxi, unfortunately, put one out on the full, but uh, he loves kicking a goal as well. That backline today was fantastic, particularly in the first half, setting the game up. Yeah, look, I suppose it's something, uh, I suppose the deficiency we needed to rectify, and uh, look, we've worked very hard at it in training, and uh, it's great that it's coming to fruition on game day. We just spoke to Brett Voss in his 150th about the momentum that's building. It really is at the moment, isn't it? Well, it is. You know, look, we, uh, we didn't have a great start to the season, and uh, to be able to come out and uh, win the last couple, um, you know, building towards finals, and uh, look, we're just... Uh, now to carry it on uh, next week as well. Good signs. Well done, mate. Cheers, 